Flying hawks while well, sitting on a horse is just not something I ever imagined I would do. But I definitely feel like I could be some kind of like medieval badass princess just like galloping through the hills with a hawk on my arm. I'm very much a horse girl. I grew up in a barn pretty much, so it's kind of my element. Hi, Carrie. Nice, nice to meet you. Falconry from horseback was a sport that was popular across medieval Europe, but today it's incredibly rare unless you're in Central Asia. I kind of stumbled upon Dartmoor hawking and thought it would just be an incredible opportunity to learn how to fly a hawk or a falcon while sitting on a horse. It's just not something many people get to do. Well, I come from doing four different horses very much from a hunting with them background. And up on Dartmoor, you've got big open spaces. The horse really enhances your falconry. 1,560 grams which is about spot on. Because if the birds are too fat, they're going to have no motivation to fly to you. So we're relying on the hunting instinct. Now, I need stress, it's not starvation, but you've got to have an appetite. Eyesight is what she lives with. So take away the eyesight, nothing's happening. That through there and really tight grip, because if you let her go at this moment in time, she will die. It's when the birds have the hood on, like Martin said, if they fly away then, like they could die because they effectively can't see. So my biggest fear is that I'm going to accidentally let her bird loose while it has its hood on and like kill one of these birds. Okay, just keep hands still. Well done, well done. You see, and then they come back up. Well yeah. done. Now, I probably should have warned you before I put him there, if he wanted to, he could put those talents through your glove. Oh, okay, he's not going to, he's not going to, just, uh, just so you're aware of the capabilities of what you're dealing with. If you're not a stable perch, he's not going to want anything to do with you. Well, because you, you, you're breaking your side of the relationship, which is a safe place to be. He seems like someone who's in it because he loves what he's doing. It's very much not for show which is something I was looking for. And just hearing him talk about the horses and talk about the birds, it's kind of like he's talking about an old friend. Man up, she's a bit wet. She's not this big and brave. And yet she'll quite happily hunt in turn, she'll take down deer, roe deer, which is about 50 pound deer. She can kill one? Yeah. Well done. It just feels really cool and just weirdly natural. I'm a huge animal person, so I think that's why is that like I went into this knowing that I wanted to get in, like get close to the birds, and like I'm fine with the dogs running around and like meeting the horses. I, oh no! I know you can't itch on me. I'm sorry. The horses Martin uses for falconry are all thoroughbred, so these are horses that are bred and designed for speed. And so not only is he using thoroughbreds, but he uses retired ex racehorses. So these are horses that have been trained to go fast, trained to win races, but then once their racing career is over, he works to rehome them and train them how to be falconry horses. Okay, open your hands. Right, are you feeling brave? Yeah. I mean, I think it was really cool that the eagle has never flown from a horse before, so I was the first person to ever introduce him to a new thing, so it's kind of like we were getting to learn together, which I never expected. That's kind of the thing you see in a nature documentary, not in real life, a bird that's just flown from right around you. So it was just absolutely beautiful to see him just soaring toward the horizon, even though he wasn't supposed to go that way. That wasn't supposed to happen, but wow! <laughs> it was amazing. I mean, I would love to do this again. It's just, you know, kind of far from home, and I don't think my horse would be okay with a hawk landing on his head, but it's not something you do every day. 